But I'm going to restore I have decided that I'm going to restore this motor. It is an antique and I've just been looking on the internet and there's people that buy these things and I am going to restore this one I could tell what year this was made in. I may could look up the not model number and stuff. And get some information on it. But I would bet you this thing is probably 50 years old or more. I would bet it is. Uh, at any rate, at any rate, that's going to be the plan. I am going to re that's going to be a project that I'm going to. Put that back on the cover. I need to set that over there. This thing here is going to be scrap. You know, it's occurred to me that I'd always vacuum cleaners. I've never seen one with where the cord wore out. The cord always looks new. Always. It hardly looks used except for the bottom part down there, but that's going into my wire pile. Now, I wonder, oh, okay, that's Phillips. Need my drink out of the way. Somebody been trying to take this apart because a lot of screws missing. never seen a vacuum cleaner like this. Never. That's one thing about these daggone vacuum cleaners. Sometimes They're a pain in the ass to take apart. Most of the time they're easy. I 
And these real deep holes that these things are in, you got to hit them things just right with the right size I'm going to throw this on the ground see what happens. I was just talking to a friend of mine. I've known him since he was a baby bump on his mama's belly. And I've known her for Well, since she was about 15 or 16, and uh, my friend, he is a game warden. And he was telling me something. We was talking about me getting that arrested that time for driving on that revoked license. He was getting a chuckle out of that. He said, Ben me, I took your ass to jail. Well, I don't think he would have. But he was talking that a lot of that stuff is so, a lot of stuff is at the discretion of the officer. He told me I've got too many damn friends that are cops. To uh, be breaking the law. Go somewhere where I can wham the hell out of it. You'll hear a big bang in a minute. There's a big thing falling on this thing coming apart. Sure ain't much to it. I never seen one done built like this before. Never. One little motor. Boy, and that is a little motor. I mean, well, let's see if I can. Usually that stuff right there is aluminum, but that whole dang wheel's plastic. I wonder what's holding that on. Um, this motor. So damn small. Uh, dang, that was a lot of daggone work. I'm wondering how.
to get these handles off the easy way. I wonder if you could grind them off and then come clean off. Because if you take a pot down there, aluminum pot down there like this, it's already going to be dirty aluminum. But then they're going to call it irony aluminum with these steel pots on it. Um, I think that's going to be tomorrow's video about how to get these handles off. I'm thinking throw the grinder to it and them things ought to come right off of there. Uh, and I've got, gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight good size aluminum pots. I think I've got a couple more in the house that's ready to go. But you know, I don't understand why my daughter, she'll, she bought these last January, and uh, she was proud as punch with these things, and come out of this box said Rachel Ray. That's kind of loose, yeah. Said Rachel Ray. And she had her, there's a place on the wall that's got hangers. And there's several of the frying pans get hung there. Unfortunately, the refrigerator door, when it opens, it goes over and hits them pans and knocks them suckers in the floor. Now, we have ceramic tile floors, and them suckers are hard. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but you can look at that frying pan. It's not round. It's it's warped. It's bent all the crap. It won't sit level. And it just don't pay to get this junk. Now, we got some nice cookware in there now that's a lot thicker than this, and it's not going to do all that bending that these do. But uh, she goes and buys that stuff. Once a year, she'll go do it. Use it around January, January or February. She'll go get these things. And occasionally, I'll find something curbside. This has not been all the crap. I was going to scrap my, my, my oldest grandson, he cooked, this is called uh, Bakers and Chefs. I'm wondering how good that would clean up. Of course, the inside, when they're coated like that and they get like that, they're all, they're shot. But he burns stuff up a lot. I do occasionally. But, I don't know, and even the smaller, uh, smaller frying pans, it's some more of that Russell Ray stuff, they've been burnt. Uh, my grandson, he's the one with cerebral palsy and you know, he's on disability. And he's kind of like, most of the time, he's a chief cook and bottle washer. That's what he does around the house. He cleans house and takes care of some of the cooking and dishwashing, stuff like that. But see this thing, Rachel Ray, that handle's just loose. Oh. Uh, and when he washes dishes, he don't really, you know, that stuff needs to be, every time it's used, it needs to be washed, and it needs to be washed good with steel wool or something like that. 
the inside I don't know how, what right way but you this is no more good because the finish is shot on that you know but uh, uh, it all gets like that bless his heart he does the best he can and This is more of that Russell Ray stuff. Old light aluminum. Been burnt. And, of course, I've got some big pots down there, too. But, I think tomorrow, <coughs> I'm going to make a video making good cast aluminum out of that getting them handles off I wonder if that there is aluminum or can you see that handle yeah it looks like aluminum it's not though it's some kind of steel but it's not the magnet's not really pulling on that because that's a strong magnet and, that's, and then it pulls on that. But this here, it's not. I don't know. You got me. But yeah, I'll make a video tomorrow about this stuff here. I got a video that's coming up. I'm... I got, I'm trying to find out the legality of it since there was some kind of deception on it, but not on my part. Uh, it, well, let me let this down and I'll tell you what it was. I'll tell you what it was. I had, when I was get, scoring all that brass, there were some belt buckles in there that was solid brass, and then there were some other belt buckles in there that looked like and felt like and felt the weight and everything like it was solid brass, but just for the heck of it one day, I cut into each piece of that, and some of those buckles are solid brass. And then a big preponderance of those buckles are cast aluminum, and it's heavy, and it's brass coated, which means it looks like brass. It acts like brass if you stick a magnet to it, till you cut into it. If you cut into it, it's white. It's aluminum. And I was really disappointed about that. And this scrapyard has screwed me around so many times. I was trying to think of ways to get back with them, and I inadvertently got back on them a little bit, but not because of something I did or said. It was what it was. I took 97 pounds of that... Uh, those, that, those, those buckles that were cast aluminum that looked like brass. And I needed gas money, so I thought, well, I can get about $50 for them. It's, it's aluminum. And so I took 97 pounds down there. And the, they poured them all onto this, into this bucket thing out of my smaller buckets, come up to 97 pounds. And they throwed them on the scale, weighed them 97 pounds, and then give me my ticket. And I went to the first winter, you know, you got to take it there, then they take and give you another ticket that you take to the ATM on the side of the building there and get your money. And that's what I did. 
and I got my ticket and I put it at the ATM thing and it spit out a hundred seventy something dollars I'm not sure about the exact amount but it's a hundred it was more than a hundred and seventy dollars and I'm like what the hell and I looked at that and it, it was brass, yellow brass. That's what they pay me for. That's what they weighed it in as. My first inclination was to go back, y'all made a mistake. But then I got thinking, you know what? You suckers screwed me a while back on almost 100 pounds of brass that I had that was so screwed air coupling things and it had a little spring wire in it that was steel and that was it and well the three the three uh, uh ball bearings is in there too so there was three ball bearings and a little spring steel and the three ball bearings in that little spring wouldn't what would have weighed about a half ounce if it even weighed that much <laughs> and they when they run that thing through they run it through as uh, scrap steel or shred. I got a little over $5 for that 100 pounds of brass. Boy, I was pissed. A hundred, they got me good on that. So that's been festering with me ever since then. But then this deal come up, and my first inclination was to say, y'all made a mistake, this is aluminum, not brass. And the more I thought about it, the more I kept thinking, screw you, you got me good on 100 pounds of brass. Now I'm getting you pretty good on 97 pounds of aluminum. And y'all are calling it brass. So if y'all are calling it brass, then brass it is. I put that $170 in my pocket. So that, my friends, is a deceiver gets deceived. He did it himself. Now there's probably going to be some negative comments about it. Uh... And I don't care. Come in away. They screwed me. They got screwed by their own doing. So all I got to say is karma. Karma, my friend. You got it. What goes around comes around, as my mother-in-law used to say. She had two or three sayings. And that was one of them. What goes around comes around. And then she had another one when when she'd let a fart slip out. And somebody'd say, Ma, and she'd say, I can't help I can't hold what I ain't got in my hand. And that's what she said. And then she'd sit over there and giggle under her breath. <laughs> I love my mom in law. I loved her more than my mother, because of course my mother abandoned me when I was ten, so there was a reason for that. I still love my mama, but she wasn't a mama. A mama, a, a real mama, don't abandon her children. I don't care. If they, I, I would have fought tooth and nail if something, somebody was trying to take my kids or something, or my grandkids. I just can't comprehend abandoning a child, your child. Can't. I could. I don't think I could abandon somebody else's child if they depended on me. I really don't. But anyway, the deceived <laughs> got deceived by their own hand. And uh, for legal purposes and possible legalities of it, uh, I ain't going to I ain't going to show the video of me setting that stuff on the scale. Uh, no, I ain't going to show that. And then somebody comes back and says, Well, you owe them something. I'm going to say, What are you talking about? 
Uh, I didn't, that didn't, that's just a lie. <laughs> then I, I'd be deceiving them, but uh, it is what it is, people. They screwed me, they got screwed, and I'm sure if it was all tallied up over the last five or six years, I'd be on the short end of the stick. I don't trust these scrapyards no further than I can spit, and they can talk all the crap they want to about how honest they are and honest weights and all that. I don't believe them in a second. Them guys that they got working for them, they school them people in different ways to scam you where it's not illegal, but it's certainly not legal and 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 honest, you know. Uh, they they know how to do it. If, if if they throw a bunch of loose pieces on the scale and the piece or two falls off, do they pick it up, and throw it back on the scale? If ain't nobody looking, they won't. It'll lay there on the floor, and that that'll be theirs. That'll be weight that you lost. I've seen that. I've seen that many times. Usually it's older people, older scrappers that get screwed like that. They, they, uh, 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 they, they'll let it pile it up there and they don't tell them nothing. They don't say, well, we can only pay you this on that. They don't say that. They just do it. Then if you call them on it, and I've called them on it a time or two that, about the difference between sheet aluminum and cast aluminum and extruded aluminum and I went in there one time and they throwed all I, I had separated all my aluminum I had extruded aluminum in one container and uh, sheet aluminum in another container and cast you know ca I had I had it all separated and them sons of bitches they throw the big container up there on that scale and weighed it and then throw all of my aluminum, all the different grades, into that one pile and give me the, uh, one money for it. And I called them on it. And this one sucker, he says, what are you talking about? I said, there's extruded aluminum in that. It's not sheet. And he stirred around in there and he pulled out a heat, big old heat sink. He said, stuff like this? And I said, yeah, stuff like that. It's extruded. And he said, well, it all goes in the sheet metal bin anyway. And I'm thinking, and you know, that's one of them drive-through deals, and they're, they're rushing you anyway, and they'd already dumped some of my stuff. So there's no way I could get it back, you know, get everything back the way it was. And I'm just thinking, screw you, your day will come. But, and the one that's doing that the most to me is TMR. And TMR is... Uh, is a, 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 a huge, and I say international scrapyard people because they got places in Canada too. And they got a place here. They got two places here in Ocala. And they got one in, uh, in uh, Gainesville, and I'm sure they got one or two over in, in Orlando. And this one here, the, the two here, one of them is a drive-through. And I go to that one when I ain't got a big load of scrap. I'll go to that one and just drive through and dump it. But across the road or across the railroad, they got a regular scrap yard. And to give you an example, I don't know what it's selling for now. In the scrap yard where you go up and back up to a pile and just dump it and they weigh your vehicle and all that, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it was 10 cents a pound. Now you go across the road, same company, and you just got a little bit and you don't want to take a little bit over there, you, uh, have them weigh it up, and they only give you five cents. They cut it in half. They cut it in half. Now, they got another yard, kind of out, it's well, it's out of the city limits. It's a big yard. It's by railroad tracks, and they got this huge uh, machine that goes up in there, and it, 
that that they throw cars on this belt and it runs them up and dumps it into this thing and it grinds them up. And you can take your scrap there. You get an honest price as long as they don't catch you uh, loading up stuff that shouldn't even be in there, you know, like plastic or something like that. They caught one guy in there. He had a water tank built into his truck. And it was underneath somehow, and I think they said it held like 500 gallons of water. It, it was several hundred. And he'd fill that thing up with water, and he'd go across the scales weighing his junk. Of course, it's weighing the water, too. And then when he backs, backs into the dump pile there, and there ain't nobody watching close, he'll start dumping water to lose weight. And he was clipping them. I don't know how much a pound, uh, how much a water weighs a pound, but it, it, he was getting quite a bit. And, and uh, the way they caught him, somebody was standing off, back off. They weren't necessarily looking at his truck, but they was doing a video about something. And they could see that water coming out of that thing out of the bottom and they and and they would and they caught it on that video so they checked their records out and found out who it was and the next time he come in when it, he checked in and weighed and everything the people knew who he was and they they notified somebody and uh, they, <laughs> they, he, he backed in there and he, he was dumping his water and they was watching that. And they almost immediately stopped him and put his ass back on the scale. And I, they deducted a whole shit pot load of weight from him and then banned him from ever going there again. And also let the other yards know. We don't have a whole lot of yards here. We got, uh, we got. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We got like five or six yards, but ain't none of them big as TMR. TMR is the biggest. And I understand that the uh, the one called Friends Recycling is the most honest. Uh, they tell me to stay away from Marks because he's crooked than a darn dog's leg, and um, that that other TMR yard there, almost across the road from the from the drive-through TMR, they seem to be pretty honest. I sold I sold a couple of vehicles there one time, but I I found I learned something about vehicles with TMR. You call them up, and don't just go in there with it and expect them to give you a good price. They're going to go in there, and they're going to give you uh, just shred, scrap steel. It's what they're going to give you. But if you call them up, call the office up ahead of time, and tell them the vehicle you got, and tell them what all is still there, uh, you get a hell of a lot better price Uh Cause it, it made about it made about seventy five dollars difference, seventy five to a hundred dollars difference between just taking one straight in and scrapping it, or calling them up ahead of time. And when they give you a price, they make a note of it and give you their name, and you give them your name. And when you bring that vehicle in, you tell them then this has been called in. Then, then they don't even worry about the weight or nothing on it. They just take it over, and over to the yard, and you go back to the office and get your money. But that's the way to do them uh, junk vehicles. And if I was still young, young enough,
still. I wish I was still young. If I was young enough and physically able enough, I would. Two things I would be dwelling on would be the e-waste and cars, because everybody's constantly wearing out computers, and you're wearing out the cars. You're wearing out the other stuff too, but the biggest money is in the cars and the e-waste. When I found out about all them CPUs, they got those 486s and 386s uh, UPAs that goes back in the 90s. Uh, you get $125 a pound for those things, and it takes about 10 or 11 of them to weigh a pound. And I think about how many of them things I threw away, just pitched them on the damn fire. I, I used to be big into working on computers and buying buying computers that was not working right or something, I'd buy them off of eBay, and I'd get them sent to me, and I would rework them and uh, sell them things. I was making good money off that, but I was wound up with a pile of CPUs and the, and the motherboards and all that stuff. If I'd have known back in the 90s, good Lord. I made some money on computers back then. Back when Y2K was the big thing about in 1999, everything was going to change over. And people were scared to death. And they'd, they'd come in there and want me to reset things on their computers when Y2K wouldn't affect it. Hell, it wouldn't affect it anyway. But you couldn't tell them that. No, I want this done. Ah, right, I'll do it. And there was a charge, I forget what I was charging, it was 30 or $40. And uh, people would come in there, everything's running too slow and I can't get it to work, and it works barely. And I had software, I had Windows uh, software and stuff, you know, and, and the different versions, Vista and all that stuff. And uh, I, they'd bring the computer in there, and I would blow everything off, you know, reformat and everything, just make a clean install of the same software as long as they had the license number somewhere on that computer that said what it was. In other words, uh, I had to use that. I could install it. I could install it on one that didn't have that, but it wouldn't be legal. But as long as it had that tag on it, you could reinstall that thing. And uh, back then, I was getting about $35 for, for doing a clean install on their uh, computer. But after, after a while, them damn things, the stuff was getting so complicated, I couldn't get my brain wrapped around it. Uh, I just I just couldn't see into it and I was making